In this module, we are going to discuss about the echocardiographic assessment of iatropulmonary window. Iatropulmonary window is a relatively rare cause of left right shunt when compared to the prevalence of the other left right shunts like atrial septal defects, ventricular septal defects and patent ductus arteriosus. It contributes for only 0.2 to 0.6% of the entire range of congenital heart diseases. Almost around half of the patients will have some sort of associated cardiac lesions which may range from VSD, aortic origin of right pulmonary artery, type A aortic arch interruption, tetralogy of fallow, Anomalous coronary artery origin from the pulmonary artery and right aortic arch. There is an interesting observation that patients with catch 22 mutation and Dijot syndrome do not have iatropulmonary window. Morphologically, iatropulmonary windows are usually found between the left lateral wall of the ascending aorta and rightward wall of the main pulmonary trunk. However, it can be variable. Iotopulmonary windows are typically classified as proximal defects, distal defects and complete extensive defects. The proximal defects are the defects which are very close to the semilunar valves. They are close to the aortic and pulmonary valves. There is a well defined distal border in a proximal defect. Distal defects are more distally located and the distal extent of these type 2 defects almost go on to the pulmonary bifurcation. In these defects very often the right pulmonary artery will have an origin from the posterior wall of ascending aorta. Total defects are defects that extend to a large extent. It almost starts from the semilunar valves and goes on up to the pulmonary artery bifurcation. In this module, we will initially start with certain clues on how to suspect the presence of AP window, then go on to show a series of illustrative cases of proximal AP window, distal AP window and complete total AP windows and also mention a few slides about the associated lesions. Iotopulmonary windows are often very large. They do not produce a lot of turbulence between the iota to pulmonary artery. The pressures in iota and pulmonary artery in most of the large AP windows are similar and hence they tend to get missed on color Doppler examination. Since around 50% of the patients with iotopulmonary window may have Additional lesions like large ventricular septal defects, iatropulmonary windows are often overlooked. One of the clues for identifying an iatropulmonary window will be the flow reversal in thoracic or abdominal iota when we start the echocardiogram. In this subsified view taken on short axis, behind the heart we are able to observe the descending thoracic aorta. If you carefully look at that color flow in the descending thoracic aorta, it's blue in diastole, which means the flow in thoracic aorta is going from below upwards. A flow reversal in thoracic aorta will be an indicator that there may be a proximal or distal iatropulmonary window. When we interrogate the spectral Doppler pattern in descending thoracic iota, we see a pulsatile systolic antigrade flow in the thoracic iota. However, in diastole, there is a low velocity holodiastolic reversal. This is a cause of runoff from some portion of the ascending aorta or arch of the aorta. 
and one of the causes for runoff from the ascending aorta is aortopulmonary window. When we look at the flows in the suprasternal view, if the distal aortic arch is showing a diastolic flow reversal, that's also an indicator of presence of some aortic runoff lesions, one of which will be the aortopulmonary window. If you see the color flow in this distal arch, we see a blue color in systole. However, during the diastole, there is a red color which indicates flow towards the transducer. There is a flow of blood from the descending thoracic aorta into the arch of the aorta in diastole. This flow reversal should be picked up and all the causes of aortic runoff should be looked for whenever we observe this phenomenon. Another way of identifying the presence of a large aortopulmonary window will be to look for an AP window whenever there is an LA-LV dilatation. If there is a left atrial and left ventricular dilatation, and if you are not able to identify a ventricular septal defect or a patent ductus arteriosus, then aortopulmonary window is one of the causes for a left-sided chamber dilatation. In the example that was shown in the previous slide, where there is a unexplained left atrial and left ventricular dilatation, on parasternal short axis view, we observe the ascending aorta, the main pulmonary artery bifurcating into the right and left pulmonary artery. When we carefully look at the aortopulmonary septum or the wall that is separating the ascending aorta from the main pulmonary artery, we can notice that very close to the transducer, close to the pulmonic valve, there is a small defect that comes in certain phases of cardiac cycle. When we interrogate the region with color flow Doppler, we are able to appreciate a flow of blood from the ascending aorta into the main pulmonary artery very close to the pulmonary valve. This is an example of proximal AP window. Proximal AP windows are AP windows which are very close to the semilunar valves. This proximal AP window is restrictive because it, there is a turbulence in the color flow between the ascending aorta and the main pulmonary artery. When we magnify that view, we are able to appreciate a moderate sized proximal aorta pulmonary window with abundant left right shunt. In the same example of restrictive proximal aorta pulmonary window, a suprasternal view of the long axis of the aortic arch shows diastolic distal arch flow reversal. You can notice that in diastole, there is a red flow of blood coming back from the descending thoracic aorta into the arch. Whenever there is a diastolic distal arch flow reversal, we should suspect of all the causes of aortic runoff. They include aortic regurgitation, aortopulmonary window, coronary arteriovenous fistulae, rupture of sinus of valve salva aneurysm to any of the cardiac chambers, aorticoright atrial tunnel, which is actually a communication from the left aortic sinus into the right atrium or from the right aortic sinus into the right atrium. It can be due to cerebral AV malformation, like vein of gallon malformation. It may be due to aortico left ventricular tunnel, which causes a paravalvar congenital aortic regurgitation. It can also be due to major aortopulmonary collaterals from the arch vessels. These are all the various causes of diastolic distal arch flow reversal. When an aortopulmonary window is very restrictive,
Sometimes they may be amenable for a trans catheter closure. In the example that was shown in the last few slides, the proximal aortopulmonary window was quite restrictive in its size. And so this permitted closure with an occluder device. On a long axis view from a parasternal window, when we made a leftward sweep to identify the pulmonary valve and the main pulmonary artery, we are able to appreciate the device jutting towards the proximal main pulmonary artery. On a parasternal short axis view, we can notice that there is no residual flow after device closure of this proximal AP window. Having seen your proximal restrictive AP window, we move on to another example of an unrestrictive large distal AP window. We are viewing from the apical window and making a sweep anteriorly to visualize the right ventricular outflow tract. In this modified apical view with a significant anterior sweep, we see the right ventricular outflow tract, the pulmonary valve and the main pulmonary artery. On the left side of the screen is portions of the ascending iota and distally the main pulmonary artery and the ascending iota almost merge together. On this color compare mode in the same view, we appreciate the pulmonary valve, the main pulmonary artery. So the proximal portion of the aortopulmonary septum is fairly intact, but there is a large distal aortopulmonary communication which is almost extending up to the pulmonary artery bifurcation. This is the characteristic feature of a distal AP window. Distal aortopulmonary window by definition should extend up to the pulmonary artery bifurcation. On a parasternal short axis view, we find that the distal aortopulmonary window is far away from the semilunar valves. We start sweeping from the origins of the semilunar valves, then sweep up progressively towards the ascending iota and we notice that as we sweep more and more superiorly and when we reach the pulmonary artery bifurcation level, we observe a large unrestrictive distal AP window. The right pulmonary artery origin is almost continuous with the posterior wall of the ascending iota. This is a common feature of distal iotopulmonary window. On a modified parasternal long axis view, we notice the main pulmonary artery anteriorly. The right pulmonary artery is almost originating from the posterior wall of ascending aorta there is a very large distal AP window. The high velocity blue color flow is seen in the right pulmonary artery which is almost seen to arise from the posterior wall of the ascending aorta. When we interrogate the color flow in the aortic arch, we notice in diastole there is a brief red flow, an indicator of diastolic flow reversal. We will demonstrate another large distal AP window. This is a modified parasternal short axis view. We can notice the ascending iota, the main pulmonary artery and a large iotopulmonary window. This iotopulmonary window is almost distally extending up to the pulmonary artery bifurcation. On a parasternal short axis view, we are able to appreciate the pulmonary artery bifurcating into the right and left pulmonary artery and immediately adjacent to the right pulmonary artery origin we can notice a defect in the iotopulmonary septum. This is a large distal epi window. Yet another view 
on parasternal short axis of the same distal iotopulmonary window. We can notice the iotopulmonary window in close relation to the right pulmonary artery origin. On a color flow interrogation of this large distal AP window, we can notice color flows across the distal iotopulmonary septum. The color flows will not show significant turbulence because most of these large iotopulmonary windows will be associated with similar pressures between the iota and pulmonary artery. So the color flows will often be laminar at a low velocity. When viewed from the apex with a significant anterior sweep, we are able to appreciate the ascending iota, the main pulmonary artery and a large distal iotopulmonary window. On a color Doppler interrogation from the same apical view, we can notice the color flows across the distal large non-restrictive AP window. Note the laminar flows across the AP window. Most of the AP windows are too large and so will not produce a turbulent color flow. We so far saw one example of a restrictive proximal iotopulmonary window, then two clinical examples of large non-restrictive distal iotopulmary windows. The third type of AP window is called total AP window or type 3 iotopulmary window. These are very large iotopulmary windows which start almost close to the semilunar valve and extend distally almost up to the pulmonary artery bifurcation. So these satisfy the definition for both proximal AP window and distal AP window and so are grouped as total large extensive AP windows. This is a parasternal short axis view of such a large AP window. We can notice that in this parasternal short axis view, the pulmonary artery early bifurcation is seen and the right pulmonary artery origin is seen. And almost up to this level, there is a large AP window. Such extensive AP windows are called total AP windows. This parasternal short axis view shows an extremely large AP window. We can notice that the AP window is almost starting from the proximal main pulmonary artery and extends almost up to the pulmonary artery bifurcation. We can also notice that the ascending iota is significantly dilated and ascending aortic dilatation is a characteristic feature of large AP windows. Iotopulmonary windows are often associated with other lesions in almost about 50% of the patient. In this apical view, we are noticing a left atrial and left ventricular dilatation, which is indicative of a possible post tricuspid left right shunt. On a subsified short axis view, we notice a large perimembranous ventricular septal defect, and this gives one of the explanations for the left atrial and left ventricular enlargement. When we look at the flows, in descending thoracic iota from the subsified window, we notice a blue color flow in diastole in the descending thoracic iota. This flow reversal in the descending thoracic and abdominal iota is a clue to aortic runoff and we should start looking for reasons of aortic runoff that was explained earlier. From the apical view, when we make a significant anterior sweep to visualize the right ventricular outflow tract, the pulmonary valve and the main pulmonary artery, we notice a large AP window. It's a large proximal AP window because it is very close to the pulmonic valve. And the posterior extent of this AP window is not extending up to the bifurcation of the pulmonary arteries. So this is an example of a large proximal AP window. In the same view, we can notice a color flow across this large proximal AP window. On a parasternal short axis view, we can notice 
the large proximal aorta pulmonary window located quite close to the pulmonary valve, there is a significant distance between this AP window and the pulmonary artery bifurcation. Proximal AP windows are ones which are farther away from the PA bifurcation, whereas distal AP windows are the ones which extend up to the PA bifurcation. On a parasternal view, we can notice that the right pulmonary artery is arising in continuity with the main pulmonary artery and not like the previous patients with distal AP window that where we saw the RPA was arising from the posterior wall of the ascending iota. Color flow interrogation on this parasternal short axis view shows a large proximal AP window. Laminar color flows from the ascending aorta into the main pulmonary artery shown with a red color and the right pulmonary artery is clearly arising as a continuation from the main pulmonary artery. The whole PA bifurcation is seen well. The aorta pulmonary window is not extending up to the PA bifurcation. This is a classical appearance of proximal AP window. We can see a large left right shunt from the ascending aorta into the main pulmonary artery. The main pulmonary artery is dilated due to pulmonary hypertension. The flow from ascending aorta to main pulmonary artery is totally left to right. We can appreciate the red color flows. And the pulmonary artery branches are clearly arising from the main pulmonary artery. Aorta pulmonary windows are very notorious for early development of Eisenmenger syndrome. Among the various causes of left right shunts, aorta pulmonary windows are the lesions that produce very early elevation of pulmonary vascular resistance. In this example, an epical four chamber view shows very minimal left atrial and left ventricular dilatation. We can appreciate on an epical view when we sweep anteriorly the left ventricle continuing as the ascending aorta and there is no clue towards the presence of an AP window. However, when we go to a parasternal short axis view, there is a very large proximal AP window the AP window is not extending up to the PA bifurcation. The aorta pulmonary window has almost the same width like the width of ascending aorta. On a color flow interrogation on this parasternal short axis view, we notice a bidirectional shunt across the AP window. The pressures in the ascending aorta and pulmonary artery are similar and there is a bidirectional flow. Unlike the previous examples that were shown, we hardly see a substantial left-right flow from the ascending aorta into the main pulmonary artery. We also notice the aortic valve in close proximity to this aorta pulmonary window. So this is an example of a proximal aorta pulmonary window with markedly elevated pulmonary vascular resistance causing a bidirectional flow. Or in other words, a proximal AP window with Eisenmenger syndrome. To summarize, aorta pulmonary window is a rare cause of left right shunt. The frequency is much lower than the other reasons of left right shunt like ventricular septal defect, atrial septal defect and PDA. Flow reversal in the arch may be a clue to pick up an aorta pulmonary window. Proximal aorta pulmonary windows are defects that are close to the semilunar valves and have a very clear defined posterior distal margin and they do not extend up to the pulmonary artery bifurcation. Distal AP windows are the ones that extend up to the pulmonary artery bifurcation and in most of the situations the right pulmonary artery will arise from the posterior wall of ascending aorta. Very rare restrictive AP windows can be closed by transcatheter methods.